This video is sponsored by SquareTrade.com. For your iPhone warranty, go to SquareTrade.com slash TSIG to save $35 off your two-year iPhone warranty. Hey folks, this is Quinn, that snazzy iPhone guy, and this is the video review of the new iPod Nano 6 generation, released in September 2010. Now, uh, many of you have already seen my unboxing and hands-on of this, but this is in fact the final review. I've had several days to play with it and I have kind of come to my final conclusions on the product itself. Now, once again, uh, in comparison to the last generation iPod model, the 5th gen, there are a few huge noticeable differences. Uh, the first one and foremost is the size of the device. The iPod Nano has sh uh, slimmed down significantly. Um, not slimmed down, but sized down. Um, it's about the size of the lower third on the last generation iPod Nano. They've gone completely touch on the new iPod Nano. There is no click wheel like the predecessor. However, they did drop a lot of different features that this iPod carried. Obviously, they dropped the uh, gorgeous screen. Um, this one still does retain a beautiful screen, but it is significantly smaller than that of the predecessor. Um, they did get rid of the click wheel on this model, which I'm kind of still skeptical on, but I I will tell you in a minute how the overall multi-touch goes for me. Uh, they dropped the microphone, which is right here, and they dropped the video camera. Uh, they also dropped the ability to play back videos. On this iPod, you could watch videos. I didn't find it very suitable because this is a very small device, and for my video, I use other iPods and my iPhone and my iPad and other such devices. So, you know, this the disappearance of the camera and the microphone and the speaker and, you know, the, the, the ability to play back videos wasn't too significant for me and it didn't bother me. But for some, that may be quite of a detriment. Now, I have it set to open on the lock screen. Just a little bit of a walk around for the device if you haven't seen it already. There's a clip. This is the product red version. Uh, it is the 16 gigabyte model, which retails for 179. You can pick up the 8 gigabyte version for 149 US dollars. Up top here, we have a... Uh, volume down switch, a volume up switch, and then your sleep-wake button. And then uh, we have a 30-pin dock connector on the bottom. I have tested it with various accessories, chargers, um, in-car audio systems, and it works with all of them. So this is a uh, pretty much uh, universal um, a compatible platform. Now we also have the 30-pin, excuse me, we also have the 3.5 millimeter headphone jack right here. Um, it does work with your inline microphone if you have some headphones that you do enjoy from, you know, the previous generation shuffle or if you've gone out to have that kind of control talk feature on them. They are integrated into this iPod as well. Now, um, the interface is very simple. Uh, it is very iOS-like, but it actually isn't running on Apple's iOS. It is a very own, it is its very own brew of software, but uh, we'll get into the features here. I'll do kind of a quick walk around and then I'll tell you my final thoughts and opinions on it. Let's start out with music because as an iPod, that is the forefront um, of the device. We're going to plug this gigantic audio cable down into the bottom. That's just to hook it up to my speaker so you can hear what uh, you would be hearing through your headphones. Um, right now it's playing a podcast, so now playing goes to whatever you're listening to. Um, there's also these four icons. You can do artists, albums, genres, songs. I typically only select my music by artists, so that's on my front page. And now you can go to whoever you want to listen to. Let's say we want to listen to Thomas Dolby. We click it. She blinded me with science. And the song will begin if your speakers are on. Okay. Um, simple, basic features are integrated in this iPod. Um, you can go to a band specifically or any you know letter of the alphabet by navigating with your finger on the side, which I really do like. It is significantly faster than having to scroll 20 times to get down to the letter on the iPod um, with the click wheel. So I do like that integration. Um, let's go to a band with lots of songs. Let's see, uh, you know, lots of songs, but Greg Glasswell has a few. So you can shuffle it as I did, pause it, next, previous, okay. Uh, you also have the, oh, excuse me, you also have the info bar down here, and this will allow you to see the other songs in the album as well as rate the song you're listening to. Um, I don't rate any of my music, but if you do, that's a cool feature. Um, since they can't fit all the controls on screen, all you do is simply slide over with your finger, 
and it will go to the next page where you can shuffle, create a genius playlist, put it on repeat, or scroll to exactly where you want on the song. The buffer, unlike the iPhone and iPod Touch, isn't a fine scrubber, so the scrubber kind of goes wherever it wants. I mean, you can get it kind of accurate, but you're not able to drag down and do really fine scrubbing, so that's kind of a disappointment. Uh, that's all we have on this song. If you have lyrics and other stuff, if you slide one more uh, slide over, uh, you will get the full lyrics on the device or the notes that you've associated with the song. Now, um, they have a unique feature in this, and you're able to go back a layer by simply swiping right. You can also, at any point in time, hold the home screen or hold your finger down on the screen, and it will bump you back to the home screen. Now, it also has podcast integration, which is really pretty good, if you ask me. Uh, you can scrub to where you want in the podcast, or you can use the navigator right here. 30 seconds back, 30 seconds back. You can turn the volume up and down. You can change the speed of the podcast itself, so you can go 2x or half time. And this works the same with audiobooks, too, and then you can put it on repeat. And then there's the show notes that are associated with this podcast. So I am going to admit that I do listen to the radio quite a bit and the iPod Nano brings in FM integration. Now, previously I said that you needed the included headphones to use the radio. This is actually not true. You just need headphones plugged in. So if I don't have anything plugged in, it will say, hey, you need to plug in your headphones. But you can use any headphones that you want. So that is a nice little feature. Uh, so we're going to open that up. And uh, you can preset your channels, uh, also known as favorites. And then... Uh, you can favorite all your favorite channels. You can do several, as many as you want. And then you can also look at all the local stations in your area and take a quick, uh, quick peek at them. Okay. Uh, so we're gonna go to the uh, to the classic rock channel. Now, if you can hear that, it sounds a little bit muffled. Uh, this radio station is muffled in my area anyway, um, so it's not that good a station. But this one, for example, if I can find it, hold on, let's scrap to it real quick. We're gonna favor that. Uh, if you can get a solid signal on any FM radio, it will sound amazing on the iPod. I don't know what it is. I don't know if it has an HD in, uh, radio tuner, but. The radio sounds absolutely incredible on it, and that's not something you typically see with built-in radio, so I was really impressed with that. You can play it, skip to other presets, and then you can also check out the info page. Um, you can pause it. Now this is kind of like a DVR or TiVo kind of feel. It'll go back 15 minutes, so if you're listening to a song or to a radio cast and you have to talk to someone, um, you can pause it and then come back and then go to exactly where you want. You can also fast forward to where you were in time. Okay, so, um, good song. So, uh, you can also go to recent songs, and it will show you the songs that you've listened to. Now, you can select those songs, uh, take a gander at them, and you can also tag those songs. So, um, these... Tagging songs was really nifty because you can go to your recent songs and go, yeah, I really like Tom Sawyer from Rush. You click it, and uh, it'll appear, it should appear, Maybe not. Um, I don't remember how to tag, to be honest. I want to say it's that, but it isn't. Uh, I don't remember. But what you'll do is uh, you'll press tag songs, and it will show up here. And then when you go into iTunes, when you sync to iTunes, it'll take all the songs that you tagged, and it'll show you them in iTunes, and you can preview and then purchase them. So that is kind of a nifty feature to integrate uh, radio into the newer kind of era of select the music you want. Now... Uh, you can also set up playlists. I don't use playlists um, typically. I do have a few on my computer, but I sync them with my larger storage um, audio units. It also has a fitness indicator, and uh, this does not require Nike Plus. There's a pedometer that's built in that's pretty nifty. Um, I actually can't get it to work unless it's tied to me, so that must be an indicator of how good it actually does work, because uh, unless I'm walking, I can't get any steps on this. But it does have a pretty neat feature because you can see your history, you can check, you can start a workout and it'll tell you how many steps, it'll tell you, it'll tell you how many steps you took in the uh, duration and uh, that you went, and then you can look at days specifically to see how many steps you racked up on the pedometer. So it is pretty neat for working out. And then uh, you have your genius mixes, songs, albums, genres, and then you have photos. Now photos, I'm not a fan of on this device. Um, the device itself does integrate um, multi-touch because when you're clipped on, 
you may be clipped on in a variety of different ways. So you can take two fingers and simply spin the screen and it'll go to wherever you want and then you can use it in that fashion. Now, um, this does require multi-touch because there are two fingers on the screen, which means multi-touch is integrated, but it doesn't work with photos. And that really kind of shocked me because this seems like somewhere where multi-touch would be crucial. You can double tap to zoom in, but there is no pinch to zoom in this um, photo album. So that is a bit disappointing, but you can do slideshows. Um, you can view photos individually. You can do a bunch of different things. You can see them in a checkered format. So it is uh, it is a decent little photo player. Very small, mind you, but um, it is an option if you do want photos integrated. Now, in coordination to the previous generation, there are no contacts. There are no notes available. But uh, to be honest, I didn't use any of those, and chances are you didn't either. But those are missing, and that is something to note. There's also a clock. Uh, you can slide left for a stopwatch and a timer. There is no alarm because there is no integrated speaker which is a bit of a bummer, but uh, I can see why they didn't put one in. Uh, that's about it for the iPod Nano. So in, in coordination to its previous generation device, is it a better iPod? And I'd have to say not necessarily, but it is more progressive. I mean, they did take a step forward, they did take a risk, they did take a leap, and they did create a killer iPod. Now, whether or not it is the iPod for you is up for you to decide. I myself do love the iPod. I don't have any regrets with it. I will be keeping it. Uh, I think it's a beautiful device, and this will be my main iPod for... Um, Working out and personal listening. I do have an iPod that fits in my car that I use in the car for my kind of stereo system in there But um, will I use it over this previous generation nano? Absolutely. I do think it is an excellent product. The screen is absolutely beautiful I think it's only 240 by 240 resolution, but it is uh, just very vibrant. It's not retina display But it is close One last thing uh, in terms of audio now there are a lot of audio files out there and uh, you know iPods are notorious for not producing uh, a very good sound. You know, there's the Zune, there are the Pioneer and the Denon players that are very high class and they do sound really good with headphones. Now, I thought this one was pretty mediocre in terms of playing music back through headphones. Um, the headphone playback on this one still could be improved a little bit. It's not up to par with the iPod Classic um, or the iPod, or excuse me, iPod Touch or iP iPhone, but um, it is better than the previous generation. The 30 pin dock connector, as always, is absolutely marvelous. So if you do have a 30 pin dock connector, the sound will be brilliant. If you're going through the headphones, there are better options out there, but you know, we're talking about portability and usability. And so for a lot of people, if you're using the included white earbuds, it doesn't matter what the audio quality is because the audio quality sucks on your headphones. So that's it on the new iPod Nano. It is a beautiful device. I highly recommend it. I love mine, use it every day, and have no intentions of ever stopping using it. Um, it is a beautiful device, and uh, if you're looking for uh, a portable music player that does its job, it does an excellent job at doing so. The disappearance of the click wheel is a bit disappointing for some people. I myself am a click wheel advocate. Um, however, it is very understandable that they did get rid of it it makes sense because everything is going kind of into the touchscreen world and the uh, integrated touchscreen on this is very excellent navigating music is just as easy if not as easy as the click wheel and so i do think it's a uh, improvement over the previous generation this is quinn that snazzy iphone guy and those always stay snazzy see you later folks